Hello everyone. So in this episode, I will show you how we reduce our AWS cost by about 30% using shared VPC. Now, when you are building modern applications, it absolutely makes sense to have multiple AWS accounts to manage our different applications. Or it could be different uh, application environments, teams, and so on. Now, have a look at the diagram below. We have been using two AWS accounts, one for production and one for the development. So I have annotated as uh, account A and account B. And each of these account had their separate VPCs. And in the VPC, we had more or less the same uh, resources spin up because uh, we need to maintain a similar environment for production and development. Now in this video, I will show you how to use shared VPC in a multi-account environment like this. But before that, I want to give you a two minutes of introduction about uh, shared VPCs and the benefits of it. Now in AWS, when you have multiple accounts like this, it really helps to reduce the blast radius and improve the security. Because each AWS account is treated as a logically separated entity. That means this account cannot talk with the other account unless otherwise we authorize to do so, right? Now AWS introduced a service called AWS Organization where you can manage multiple accounts like let's say this account A and account B belongs to the same organization. You can manage them under a one umbrella. And that is really convenient in terms of administration. Now here's the problem. If you want to maintain your resources in a private network, then we have to spin up a VPC and create those resources inside it. Now in this case, we had AWS Lambda communicating with the Elasticsearch cluster and we wanted to isolate these resources from the internet. So we put it inside a VPC so that they are not visible to the outside world. And at the same time, we had a, a AWS Fargate cluster and the Docker containers that is running inside this Fargate cluster needed to connect to the internet in order to fetch the latest uh, updates, the security patches and so on. So uh, we set up some connection through a net gateway so that these Docker uh, containers can talk to internet through the internet gateway and fetch those security updates. Now this is the setup in the production, but in the, our development environment as well, we had a similar setup because we wanted to test everything properly before we release into the production. So we had another dev Elasticsearch cluster, which is not as uh, highly provisioned as the production one. However, we had to maintain one Elasticsearch cluster. And similarly, we had a dev Fargate where it runs the containers and we enable internet access to those containers through the net gateway, just like what we had on our production environment. Now, the problem is these VPCs are account specific. Now imagine I needed another environment, let's say uh, for staging. So I have to create another AWS account and create another VPC and have absolutely a similar setup. So if I want to set up some connectivity between these accounts, the best option is to go for a VPC peering connection. Now here in this diagram, the account A and account B is connected via a VPC peering connection. So this VPC can talk to this VPC through this VPC peering connection. Now in my previous video, I showed you how to create a peering connection between MongoDB VPC and AWS VPC so that our Lambda function can talk to MongoDB securely. If you haven't watched that video, I'll put a link up here. Now the problem with VPC peering is really become apparent when you have many AWS accounts. Have a look at this one. So if you have, let's say multiple AWS account, account A, account B, account C and D and many more accounts, then creating these VPC peering connections and managing them will become increasingly difficult. Because as you know, this VPC peering is not transitive connection. That means you always have to have a VPC peering between one account to the other account, just like shown here. So account A, account B, there's a one VPC. Account A and account C, there's another VPC. B and C, there's another VPC. Likewise, we have to manage so many AWS VPC peering connections. Now, in this case, if you consider account B, there are three VPC peering connections that is attached to account B. And in fact, there's another VPN connection that is connected to on-premises network so that we have to manage all these routing logics in a routing table. And that is a maintenance hassle. So as a solution, AWS introduced something called transit gateway. Now have a look at this side. 
Now transit gateway really helps us to centrally manage all our VPCs including VPN connections, direct connect connections as a centralized hub. So now we can easily communicate with VPC to VPC, VPC to VPN through this transit gateway centralized hub. And in fact, we can manage our routing logic, monitoring in one place. However, it would be really easy if we just have one VPC and that spans across all these AWS accounts so that all our network will be managed by just one VPC. And that's where the shared VPC comes into play. Now, in our previous architecture, we had multiple AWS accounts and they had their own VPCs. Now, let me quickly show you that one first. Here we go. So we have one VPC for account A and another VPC for account B. And what we did is we shared the VPC of production to dev as well. Now both accounts are sharing the same VPC. Now what benefits does this really gives us? Well, one of the major benefits is that there's only one VPC to manage. So the developers in the development account, they don't have to worry about the network setup because it is already being managed by the production account. So the developers can just spin up their resources in that shared VPC. And the other main benefit is that all the accounts that uses the shared VPC can share their network resources. For example, in this case, the NAT gateway can be shared by both dev account and the production account. And as you know, NAT gateways are quite costly. So by using shared VPC, we can reuse the one NAT gateway that is in the shared VPC across multiple accounts. Thereby, we can save a quite a bit of cost. Well, not only can we share VPC resources like NAT Gateway, we can also share other resources as well. Now, here in this example, I'm still using two Elasticsearch clusters, one for production and the other one for the development. So in our use case, what we did instead is we fortify the security and the performance of the Elasticsearch cluster we had earlier. And then we started reusing the same Elasticsearch for both dev and production. Well, we have set up the logical separation so that the production data is not accessible to dev. And this is the decision in our project. But however, this is possible. Instead of using two Elasticsearch clusters, now we only have to maintain one Elasticsearch cluster. So all in all, we could save quite a bit of cost when we introduce shared VPC to our architecture. Now, this is the introduction and it took more than two minutes, however. So in the next video, I'll give you a demo on this.